Welcome to another edition of the CampingSurvival.com video blog. <clears throat> we figured while uh, Kevin and Stella from the Wilderness Learning Center and the rest of our friends are visiting, we'd get a little more fun out of them. So we decided to ask Kevin if he'd make some knots for us. Um, yes, out of our, our different multicolored paracords. And so what we're going to do is, did you have something to say? No, oh. I was ready to just tie some knots. Okay, cool, excellent. So what we're going to do is uh, Kevin's picked out four different knots. He's going to make them right here. And then at the end of it, we'll probably post it up on, of course, YouTube and Facebook. And we're thinking, actually, of asking you folks if you can make up your own knots. So if you can make an application of these knots and make a picture of it, and we're thinking about having a giveaway based upon the most interesting application of the knots that Kevin makes here. So um, go ahead, have at it, have at it, Kevin. Sounds good. Okay, the first knot that I'm going to show you is called the diamond knot. This is a knot that a lot of people always ask us about. If you look on the end of my little pocket fixed blade here, uh, I keep a little diamond knot, and uh, it's used basically as a decorative knot, but it gives you a pretty good grab on your paracord. So to start the diamond knot, I have a small length of cord here. I'm going to cross these two like this, pinch, bring this one over, under this one, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it through here. Now let me try this again. You need a little extra cord. So where I was was right here. I'm going to pass it through, through here, and then back up through. And this gives you your basic diamond in the center, okay, and it looks like that. Here's the tough part. You've got to take this end pass it over this and up through the diamond. So it goes over and up through the diamond and I just let it sit there. Then I take this one, I pass it over that and up through the diamond. And where it gets the diamond shape is in how it pulls together like this. Just like that. Okay, That is your basic diamond knot. Great for a lanyard, great for, well, I'm going to let you guys decide. That's part of the contest. All right, the next knot I'm going to show you has a couple different names. Uh, I learned it as a Scottish knot, but uh, I know that it's also called the Ian's knot, and it's also called uh, a double bow knot uh, by some people. And I use this one for my shoelaces. So it starts off like a basic shoelace knot. If you imagine this water bottle were my shoelace, or I should say my, my foot, and it starts off like you normally would tie your shoes. And when you're a little kid, you make the bunny ears like this. And your basic shoelace knot is you cross the bunnies, bunny ears, and you pull through like this. Well, the Ian's knot, or the double bow knot, or whatever you decide to call it, has just one extra little step. And the nice thing about this knot is it's symmetrical, and it's very strong. So if I make the basic shoelace knot like this, I cross my bunny ears just like the basic shoelace knot, I pull this one up through, okay, and I push this one down through, and then I pull tight. Now when you do this correctly, you will have these two little rolls over the top, and that is your Ian's knot. Uh, this knot is fantastic because it won't come undone unless you pull these two, and the great thing about this knot, I'll tie it again, is that a lot of people switch out paracord for their shoelaces. So you have an emergency supply of paracord uh, just in case. You know, you'd have to lose your shoes to lose all your paracord. This is the best knot we found at the Wilderness Learning Center for tying shoes with paracord laces. Again, one last time. Tie here. Bunny ears. Cross. Push one up through, push one down through, pull tight. Just like that. All right. I always recommend uh, whenever you have a flashlight, you know, something that uh, you're going to carry at night, uh, and for a lot of your gear, that you dummy cord it. Well, when people see this flashlight, they wonder, how do you do this? Um, what is this called? This is called whipping, and I'm going to show you how it's done. You can do this for a rope that might tangle, uh, and it's actually pretty simple. What you're going to do 
is you have a small length of paracord and you have your object. Well, you're going to line it up like this. Okay? You're going to wrap it like so. And you wrap it as many times as you need to. The last thing you're going to do is you're going to tuck the end of it through this little hole. Of course, it doesn't want to work. Here we go. Just like that. And then the final thing you're going to do is you're going to take this right here and pull on it. And you can pull it underneath the wrappings if you need to. So what you've done, and of course when you're done you can nip that and burn it. When you're done, you now have a real easy way to cord wrap pretty much anything. Um, including knife handles or whatever you want. And again, it's emergency corded in case you need it. So this is called whipping, very simple process, and I'm sure you can find a thousand and one ways to incorporate it in the outdoors. When you carry a lot of paracord, it's inevitably going to get tangled. And a lot of people ask us, well, how do you carry your paracord? Uh, some people just take a small stuff sack and stuff it all in like this. And then what they do is when they need it, they just pull on it and it comes right out. That's fine. But if you're looking for a more compact way, uh, you can just take two fingers or the hang ten sign and you can just do little figure eights like this. The nice thing about doing this method of wrapping your paracord is that when you pull on it, it doesn't get tangled. Some people do this, but when you see what you're doing, you're pulling one cord over the top of the other and it kind of gets messy. So sometimes when you go to throw the cord, it gets all these little knots in it and whatnot, it gets all tangled. So what we recommend, again, is to just take two fingers if you have a small length and just do these little figure eights. And then when you need to wrap it, you can then do this and finish it off with a half hitch, just like so. All right, whenever you use paracord, uh, to keep the ends from fraying, because that's what they do after all, uh, the best way to keep them from fraying is burning it. Uh, but you got to be careful because with paracord, when this stuff is on fire and it's melted, uh, it becomes almost like napalm. When this stuff gets on you, it just cooks and cooks and cooks. The easiest way to, uh, to burn it, I found over the years, is to just take a you know, pair of scissors or a knife or whatever, cut it, um, like so. Of course, my scissors are pretty dull. Um, so I'm going to cut it like this. A little haircut. And I'm going to burn it. Now, whenever I burn it, I don't let this... Um, create a big glob that can fall on me, what I do is I take the lighter and I use the metal part and I just pull like this. So, let's see. So now I've got that, I can cut that off and I'll just quickly melt it so it's not a jagged sharp edge. And that's all there is to it. Just like that. And now your paracord won't fray. So uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for visiting our site. And thank you, Kevin. Thanks a lot, Tom. Have a good day. You too.